As you guys know, I have been uh, very consistent in my 24 years of pastoring uh, at the same church, by the way. I don't know if that shows my patience or your patience or somebody's ignorance. I don't know what it is, but um, I've been very consistent in the way that I've handled politics in that I do not preach politics. Um, and that's probably frustrating to a lot of you, uh, but there's, there's plenty of political preachers on YouTube if you need your, you know, satisfaction from that. But that is not me. I, I feel very strongly that the pulpit is for the Word of God. And that is the purpose of the pulpit. And that is, that is something I felt very strongly about all of my life. And uh, I always want to use this stage because I'm going to... I'm going to answer to the Lord uh, for myself as being a shepherd and for you guys. And so I'm not, I'm, you know, the, the, the person maybe you like to watch online isn't responsible for you. I am as your pastor and your shepherd. And so I take that calling very seriously and, and uh, literally. And because of that, I reserve this pulpit for the Word of God. Um, so as I was getting ready uh, this morning, the Lord really began to stir in my heart to, to talk about something this morning in the beginning before we, because we got a lot of things going on today. I'm not going to preach another sermon at the end so you guys can breathe a sigh of relief. Everything I'm going to say is mostly going to be here right here in the next few minutes. Um, but Oakley and I, we were working outside yesterday on, on the porch, and um, we don't typically listen to the... Uh, news while we're working like that we usually listen to uh, other things that are theological whatever so whatever reason we were and uh, we saw what you guys saw on the news and um, my thoughts to myself was what a horrible state our country's in um, and by the way I would be saying the same thing if it was the other guy My heart also quickly went out to whoever else was uh, wounded, killed right there on live TV. And I just had a sinking feeling in my chest. And, and so this morning I was asking the Lord, what, what would you have me to say today? Because I know it's on everybody's mind. And, and uh, this was obviously historical. That doesn't happen every day. I mean, in modern times, only two, three, four times maybe that that's happened. And I've, I know how the devil can jump in. When our emotions are high and quickly lead us to hate. And uh, so I asked the Lord as shepherd, you know, tell me what I, what I need to say. And, and uh, so the Lord laid a few scriptures on my heart. And the Lord laid on my heart that we, that we take a few minutes today to pray uh, for our country. Um, and for our own hearts. Because i got to tell you, as he began to lead me into some scriptures this morning... Does anybody ever sort of get uncomfortable with God's Word when it hits you? Like it doesn't, it, it always lines up with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't always line up with your heart and your mind. And it challenges us. And that's what it did for me. And so that's probably what it's going to do for you. But you've got to take this up with God. Because this is what His Word says. And so the first thing God's Word tells us is that God is sovereign in other words, that's a big word, and for those of you that maybe grew up in Blue Mountain like me, that basically means God is in control. We have free will, but God ultimately works out His plan. I can't, I can't explain that. That's a hard thing to explain to you, but He works out His plan uh, even though we have free will. But the Bible tells us very clearly that every leader, every president, every king, every ruler is in power because God placed him there I think we forget about that don't we God placed him there Romans 13 and 1 says let everyone be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that which God has established the authorities that exist have been established by God now you can argue that some of them are placed there for different reasons for the good or for the bad for judgment, for prosperity, for peace. But what we cannot argue with is God's word is that leaders are established ultimately by Him. 
And so if that be the case, God has called us to do two things. This is what God has called us to do. Number one, he's called us that we are to live our lives following our Lord and our King who has called us to be a light and to do what is right. That is the simplicity of our calling is that we follow Jesus. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our King. And He's called us to live our lives in a certain way. And that does not change depending on the status of the world that we live in. In 1 Peter chapter 2, it says, Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor or as, as supreme, or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. I think instead of foolish people, the message Bible there says social media, but I could be wrong there. <laughs> Titus chapter 3 verse 1 says, Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle. I told you the Word of God will get, get us uncomfortable because it has to get us out of ourself and under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In that it, it says to be gentle and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. The Bible is very clear that we are to follow God first. And within the framework of following God, we are to be good citizens. God first in that it comes to whether we obey man or God, we obey God. Do you all get that? There's examples in the Word. That if we have to make the decision between we're going to obey man or God, we obey God. But pastor, I can't be a light with the way the world is going. What would you say to Daniel who was thrown in the lion's den by his government? What would you say to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that was thrown in the fiery furnace by their government? What would you say to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who was crucified by the system of his time? What, what would you say to his disciples who one by one were martyred by the governmental systems of their time? By the way, that's who Jesus was also talking to when he said this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people put a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. You may not know this, but many of the early Christians were martyred by this, this ruler of the time whose name was Nero. And he hung their bodies up in the streets and set them on fire as lamps. And so them being a light to the world was not only through their lives, but actually also through their death. And yet we want to make the decision that because the world is not the way we want it, we can't be lights. We can't show God's love. We can't refuse hate. That is not what our king says. That is not what our word says. We can have righteous indignation. We can have anger. We can have frustration. I have all those things all the time with our world. But our king is Jesus. And he never changes. That's what last week was about. He is who he is. And if we can't be lights, then who can be? It's us or it's no one. It's the people of God or it's no one. So we cannot let the enemy pull us in when emotions are high to respond in the same way that the world responds. That's first. Secondly, the Bible tells us that we are supposed to pray. 
We're supposed to pray for our leaders. We're supposed to pray for our governments. He says this, and this one is so important. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings, and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Did you hear that? God desires all. Put some names in that blank today. There may be some names in that blank that you've got to get out of you know, your heart that's fighting against it. And say that person's name, God desires that person to be saved. God desires that that person does not perish. How can we do that? The only way we can do this is that we do what the Bible says. We pray. So there's my sermonette for the day. That God would ask of us that we would take a few minutes today. And I know this is different. It's, 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 it's not how we usually do a service. We would ask that we would take a few minutes and pray. And so whether you would like to come to the front or right there where you are, you can bow your head. I would like for us to take a few minutes today to pray. Here's what I'm going to pray for. You, you, you pray how you're led. But I'm going to pray for my own heart. And I'm going to pray for my country. I'm going to pray for my neighbors. And I'm going to pray that God would give me the heart that he has. That every person in my life and every person I see on the TV and every person I see online, that I would have the heart to have a desire that they be saved the same way God had that desire for me when he saved my life. Can we do that this morning? And so I welcome you to a time of prayer and however it looks. And we're not worried about the kids are staying in today. That's fine. We're not worried about any of that, let's just take a few minutes today and go to the Lord in prayer together.